Hello, my name is Trish Butler. I'm the bereavement support midwife here in the Rotunda Hospital and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what we do as a bereavement team and um, introduce the other members of the team and explain our role when women have a miscarriage. As I said, I'm Trish, I'm the midwife. We also have a chaplain here in the hospital and we have a bereavement social worker. We're all here Monday to Friday and we all support women and families when they have a miscarriage, when they come in contact with us. We work very closely with the multidisciplinary teams across the hospital and we would be very involved with some women and less involved with others depending on their, their needs and their situation. Um, in case anybody's interested, there is a bereavement support information booklet on our website and we offer this to parents when we meet them here in the hospital. A miscarriage is any pregnancy that spontaneously ends before the little fetus or baby can survive and when the baby is born with no signs of life. Legally, this includes all gestations at or below 23 weeks and 6 days or 499 grams. And unfortunately, for any little babies born outside of these, these conditions, the birth is not legally registered and there is no formal certificate available for these parents. The bereavement support midwife's role when I meet parents who've had a miscarriage. I meet everybody here in the hospital who's had a miscarriage when there is an identifiable little baby. When women have a miscarriage, sometimes you may or you may not pass a very obvious little baby. You might know immediately that this is a very identifiable little baby. Sometimes when you have a miscarriage, you might pass tissue in the hospital or indeed at home. And sometimes you may have to go to theatre and have what is commonly called a DNC. Any tissue that is passed here within the hospital is always sent down to the laboratory to be examined. Sometimes they identify a tiny little baby. If this happens, I am informed and I'll always contact parents to inform them of this. If there's no identifiable tiny little baby, I will not be informed of the miscarriage and I won't know about you and I won't contact you. Sometimes you may miscarry at home and sometimes you may pass a tiny little baby at home. You can, if you wish, bring this little baby into our emergency room and I will be informed of this and I will contact you. If parents wish, we can offer a post-mortem here in the hospital for all little babies that are born above 12 weeks gestation. We also offer respectful burial or cremation for all little babies once they are identified. And I will always discuss all the available options with parents and support them in making the right choice for themselves. Parents can have as much or as little in involvement as they want. There is a hospital option for burial or cremation and if parents choose this, we will make all of the arrangements in line with their wishes and the hospital will pay for it. All of our little babies, no matter how big or small, are always looked after very respectfully and very carefully in the hospital mortuary until parents are ready to decide what they want to do. The role of the medical social worker who works with the bereavement support team, she provides an opt-in service, so she's available to you if you want to engage with her. She offers practical and emotional support to patients following a pregnancy loss. She can provide information on the confidential counselling support services available within the hospital, as well as the relevant supports within the community. The support patients require following a pregnancy loss varies, and it's very individual, as everyone's circumstances are different. Unfortunately, there is no current legislation in place to avail of time off work for those employed when they experience a miscarriage. Following a miscarriage, parents can access a sick cert for work either through the hospital or through their GP and avail of certified sick leave from work. If your employer doesn't pay your full salary during sick leave, you can apply for illness benefit to support you financially during your period of unpaid sick leave. Some employers will grant compassionate leave following a pregnancy loss, but this is at the employer's discretion. You don't have to tell your employer that you've had a pregnancy loss if you do not wish to. It's your decision whether you wish to disclose this information to them or not. The role of the chaplain here in the hospital, and particularly for the bereavement support service, um, I will outline that to you now. She is a lay Roman Catholic chaplain 
and she's also an opt-in service so she'll only engage with the parents when you want to meet her. She's available to people of all faiths and to those with no specific faith background. She can discuss with you your spiritual, religious and pastoral needs. If you wish, she can contact ministers or chaplains of other faiths or you may prefer to contact your own priest or spiritual leader. If you do, please arrange this with the chaplain or any other member of the briefing support team so we can facilitate the visit. The chaplain can provide a blessing for you and your little baby if you wish and she can prepare a removal service with you. She is also available to attend and lead removal services from the hospital and she can discuss with you various rituals and options. You will also be offered some religious and spiritual keepsakes of your baby. These can include a personalised prayer leaflet, a candle with your baby's name written on it, a personalised blessing certificate and or a naming certificate. Okay, we have a book of remembrance that's kept here in the hospital. Babies' names are not automatically entered into this book of remembrance. It's only done at the request of parents. If you wish to have your baby's name entered into the book, please contact the chaplain or any other member of the bereavement team. The Rotunda Hospital holds an annual service of remembrance every November, and it's for people whose baby has died through miscarriage, ectopic pregnancy, stillbirth, neonatal death or fetal anomaly. Everyone is welcome to attend. You can contact the hospital chaplain or any member of the bereavement team year by year to ascertain the date of the remembrance service, and it's usually somewhere in mid-November.